Well, you know, we used to think the bottom of the ocean was nothing but muddy and flat and full of sedimentary rock. You know, after World War II and we had submarines going around the world using sonar, we found that the bottom of the ocean was a very different place. In fact, one of the very unique things about the bottom of the ocean, what are these things called these black smokers, black chimneys? And there are giant piles of rock from volcanoes that were spewing out black water. They looked almost like they were smoky. In fact, we found that at the bottom of the ocean, you find rocks from volcanoes. In fact, we find rocks that are from fire, or igneous rocks. In this video, we're going to look at igneous rocks. So we're going to do four different things in this video. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to define exactly what is igneous rock. Then we're going to see how igneous rocks can change based on how fast or slow the magma can cool. We're going to see and we're going to label those. Well, then we're going to compare and contrast intrusive and extrusive and mafic and felsic. Those are different types of igneous rock. And finally, we're going to see if we can identify a couple of the basic types of igneous rock. Well, what exactly is igneous rock? Well, if you look at the word itself, igneous, you can see that there's a Latin root there. In a lot of science, we use Latin and to begin. And the prefix of I-G-N, anytime you see that in the word, it means fire. So you think of ignite. When you ignite a barbecue, you're catching it on fire. Or you put your key in the ignition, you're starting a little tiny combustion engine that's housing a little fire. So it's ignite is fire. So looking at igneous rock, we know there's something about fire. In fact, Igneous rock is rock that forms from cooling magma, right? Liquid hot magma. No, it's rock that cools from cooling magma. We lost some powers reference that we caught it. Uh, maybe it's dated. I don't know. So all igneous rock has something to do with magma. I like to think of it almost as volcanoes, especially here in the Pacific Northwest. We're all too familiar with volcanoes. We're only about 30 miles east of an active volcano, or we're only about 60 miles active uh, south of one of the most biggest eruptions ever to happen at Mount St. Helens. So when you think of igneous rock, I want you to think about volcanoes. Well, there's a word there I might have used that people get confused. There's magma and lava. How are they different? Well, and to understand an igneous rock, you have to see that they are different. First off, magma is liquid rock that is underneath the earth. It hasn't made it to the surface. On the other side, when that magma does make it to the surface, we call it lava. So that is molten flowing rock on the surface. When we look at volcanoes, you'll see that not all volcanoes have lava, but magma under the ground, lava above the ground. You see, that matters, especially when we start to look at our first categories of, intrusive, of igneous rock. We have intrusive and extrusive igneous rock. And they're very different. In fact, let's start with intrusive igneous rock. An intrusive igneous rock is a rock that's forming out of magma cooling underneath the Earth's surface. You know, the Earth's surface acts like a blanket, and it kind of keeps the heat in that magma longer, and they slowly cool, and they can cool really slowly. As a result, when they cool really slowly, the minerals in crystals have more time to develop, because they just have more time. They are more to liquid and flow around. So you get really large crystals. In extrusive, the magma becomes lava and actually makes it to the surface. As when that happens, that ma magma, the lava, cools much faster. So in extrusive, it's on the surface, it's going to cool really fast, and the crystals can be smaller to non-existent. So intrusive, inside the ground, going to be much cool, uh, cool slower, bigger crystals. Extrusive, above ground, cool much faster very small crystals. Well, the, ma the magma itself can be different and change based upon what's in it. And we actually have two different types that we just categorize of the magma itself. If a rock cools from a type of magma we call mafic, it hasn't have much of this thing we call silica in it. And silica is an atom, uh, polar molecules that, um, well, if you don't have a lot of it, the lava becomes really oozy. Mafic magma or mafic lava is really dark in color. So when you see a really dark igneous rock, you can kind of use that as a clue to think this is mafic. And there's some great examples. Well, there's the type of rock called basalt. It's really common over here in Oregon. In fact, 
we have a type of formation called the, uh, the Columbia Flood Basalts, which cover much of Oregon. Or you can go to Hawaii and see the flowing lava fields, which are basalt. On a side note, the bottom of the ocean is where you also find a lot of basalt. There's also gabbro. That's another type it's very, uh, that you can see. On the other side, if you have a type of magma, or lava, we'll say magma, that has a lot of silica in it, we call it felsic. And felsic igneous rocks are really sticky and clumpy. The silica almost acts like a glue and kind of holds it together. If mafic rocks are like maple syrup, I like to think of them as food, uh, felsic rocks are like uh, whipped cream, whipped marshmallows. Right? They flow, but they're really sticky. So it's much also as much lighter in color, so you get to see that too. Um, and so you get sticky rocks. As a result, these could be things like granite or a type of rock called rhyolite, which are kind of stickier ball rock. Now, we could put all of these different categories, mafic, felsic, intrusive, extruding in a grid. And you could have different types. You could have an intrusive mafic, you could have an extrusive mafic, you could have an intrusive felsic, and an extrusive felsic. And there's kind of pairs. And so a mafic rock that forms intrusive will look very different than a mafic rock that forms extrusive. And so you can tell a lot by where it's formed and what's in it. So we did four things here. We defined igneous rock. We said igneous rock was rock that forms from cooling magma. We explained how the cooling rate of magma affects the type of igneous rock. That when you cool it very slowly, you form uh, bigger crystals, and that is intrusive. And when you form it very fastly on the surface, that's extrusive, and you get no crystals, or very little ones. We also saw that the type of magma matters. If it has a lot of silica in it, it becomes mafic, I'm sorry, it becomes felsic, and it becomes really sticky and light colored, whereas if it doesn't have a lot of silica in it, it flows and oozes and becomes mafic. We also saw a couple different types of basalt and gabbro and granite and rhyolite, and those are basic categories. There's also tons of them, hundreds of them, thousands of them. Uh, and you can go and look at where you might see around you. So let me remind you how these videos work. You can always go back and hit pause if something's not really clicking yet. You can watch it again or watch just certain segments again. But always remember to keep moving forward.